Australia and welcome to the Hampstead Assize as we enter the final straight. And uh, with just a couple of days left now in the campaign, uh, Tony Abbott's done a pretty good job of summarising the choice that voters face on election day. It's not goodies versus baddies, it's baddies versus baddies. Yeah. <laughs> or, to give the election its full name, taking into account the Clive Palmer and Bob Catter parties, it's baddies versus baddies versus fatties versus maddies. <laughs> Now, look, even though uh, a coalition victory now does look like a dead certainty on Saturday, the campaign hasn't been without a few last-minute surprises, such as when Harold Holt finally emerged during a <laughs> run. Press conference this week, Amara. He looks good. Thank you. Hey. He looks good. <laughs> and all election, Bud's been at pains to paint himself as someone who doesn't rely on three-word slogans. Now, he's now pioneering slogans of a much more substantial length. And I asked him just to give a straight answer to a straight question. Why won't you release all your costings now? You say you've done them. Why are you evading an answer to this question? Oh, it's pithy. Wow, that's pithy. Good. And I'll tell you what, that slogan made for a strong, bold backdrop at the ALP launch last oh. night. <laughs> I've got to say, I, I thought it was a very odd kind of launch. I mean, a lot of the Labor MPs didn't even bother showing up, including the Treasurer, Chris Bowen, who couldn't make it due to a prior commitment in Western Sydney with removalists at his electorate yeah. office. <laughs> yeah, with so many Labor MPs missing in action, they had to fill the seats with a whole lot of out-of-worked actors. I mean, it was quite sad that's the only work Michael Caton can get oh, nowadays. No. Look, there wasn't a, a great deal of love for Rudd at the launch. Even his wife said he was useless, describing him as a man who... When sent to Bunnings for a mozzie candle, one mozzie candle, comes back with Roman flares, blue tack, an extension cord, potting mix, a stepladder, secateurs, but no mozzie candle. Hang on a second, flares, cutting implements, fertiliser. The guy's trying to make a bomb, people! Oh, Get out! Look, if he's trying to destroy Labor, he doesn't need a bomb. On current projections, a bomb won't claim as many scalps as the election itself. <laughs> Last week, you might recall, we mentioned how Rudd's been seen using Hitler imagery. And mm. uh, now it seems... Abbott wants to get in on that uh, Nazi action too. You might remember Faulty Towers and Basil... Uh, yeah. Basil Faulty's famous impression of Hitler. Who's this then? Start you! <laughs> Classic comedy. Well, did you notice Abbott kept doing that same impression on Kitchen Cabinet earlier tonight? <laughs> Very insensitive, I thought. Uh, don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> Now, of course, tomorrow night it's Kevin Rudd's turn on Kitchen Cabinet and there has been a lot of speculation about what dish he's going to prepare for Annabelle Crabb. The secret was out today, though. What we had was waffle, waffle, waffle <laughs> and waffle. Not an especially balanced meal, no. but you've got to say, Kevin Rudd just loves waffle. <laughs> Looking at the Coalition's week now, and Abbott raised some eyebrows when he backed away from his promise to buy a fleet of drones, saying he's happy for the Coalition to just stick with their old drone. <laughs> and Abbott was out on the hustings in Adelaide yesterday where he was driven around by Christopher Pine in a ute. Seriously, if you'd given me 100 guesses, I never would have guessed Christopher Pine drives a ute. <laughs> I always pictured him in something much smaller. Or <laughs> even just zipping about on a penny farthing. <laughs> But look, Abbott's treatment of women continues to be an issue and he got a rude surprise this week when he tried to cop a feel of Bronwyn Bishop. This is probably the most ball handling I've done for years. Oh, oh, tiny. Oh, mean, oh, surprise. Meanwhile, the candidate who he first described as having sex appeal made some waves of her own this week with her comments on Four Corners about asylum seekers. It is a hot topic, but it's a hot topic here because our traffic is overcrowded. That's right, asylum seekers are to blame for Sydney's traffic congestion. You can't drive anywhere in this town without getting stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper boats. Yeah. <laughs> drive me mad! Chris, no, people mocked her for those comments, but the evidence is there on the tape. I mean, look at that interview. She gave it in a car, and you can clearly see, look at That's that, refugees topic, it, on the roof of that oh. car behind her there. <laughs> Classic queue jumping in the traffic! Even Christopher Pines had to put up with it. <laughs> Which is why I think the Rudd government has vowed to tackle the traffic problem by putting a special refugee lane on all roads. It's slow, dangerous and strictly one way to Manus Island. The Coalition, on the other hand, they revealed that if they are elected, they're going to change the reporting rules so the government won't be obliged to announce the public arrival of any new boats. And they've already found the perfect person to do the non-announcements, James Diaz. 
So, with just three more sleeps until polling day, all the polls suggest that a coalition landslide is on the cards, but what about the minor parties? How will they fare? We decided to take a look at one of the new political forces who's been making a splash this election. At this election, there's a third choice for Prime Minister, Clive Frederick Palmer. A man with a new plan for government. We need to elect people to government to take control of the government, we, who, who are not controlled by the government. But how will Clive run this government not governed by government? <laughs> there was a man once who had ideas just like our Clive Palmer. Steven Spielberg? Miley Cyrus? Share the words, I have a dream. Oh, Martin Luther King. You know what, Clive has a dream too, it's full of ideas. It's a full, amazing ideas. His first full, amazing idea? Join a man with no idea. Oh, I know, and I hope you know it too. But the negotiations hit a sour note. And the place to go. And their coalition fell over. As for an alliance with the Catter Party, Mr Palmer's all but ruled that out, saying there are big policy differences. For example, he says he doesn't support shooting snakes in the backyard. Mm, I just don't know who to vote for. But nothing could stomp the Palmer juggernaut. I will be the Prime Minister of this country. Because you don't get elected based on polls. It's not a question whether we're on the ballot paper. But based on... Three million hits on our website demonstrate. 3.2 million hits on our website. We've had seven million hits that have blown up the website. Are, are you worried that you might be topped by a grumpy cat in this election? Because he's had 12 million hits on his YouTube channel. Rob Keller came up to me and says, Ah, Clive, you know, everywhere I go across this country, people want to have their photo taken with me. Means that a lot of people want to vote for us. And so you should, uh, you should come on board, Clive, and <laughs> we can do it together. <laughs> and I said, well, Bob, my daughter just went to uh, Disneyland and she wanted a photo taken with Mickey Mouse. But I don't think she'd vote for him. Which is a far better way of making the same point we were. But for Clive, the election is all about policy. All this policy discussion is a waste of time. Uh, not that policy, this policy. Barbecue sauce in nine out of seven cases gets you more votes than uh, sour cream. Which is why in nine out of seven cases, Clive has left his policy to the big hitters. Hello, I'm Glenn Lazarus. It's time to tackle the issues with common sense solutions. Support me in the Senate. Do you have common sense solutions costed? We do. So you're going to increase old age pension by 20%. Yeah. There's an extra $80 billion for health, That's $20 right. billion for education, yeah. and you're going to reduce tax rates by 15%. That's correct. That yeah. seems to be a, a bit of a difficult juggle. Well, it Where's does, the but, extra money? Well, it does because you haven't made a billion dollars in your life and you can't understand no, it. No, I haven't. And not many people do. But you could follow what President Obama has done in the United States. Yeah, copy that President Obama guy. <laughs> Great idea. Clive is also worried about the end of the mining boom. The end of the mining broom. Sorry, I mean the mining broom. The end of the mining broom. Do you think that when the mining broom does give up, that it will be replaced by other forms of mining, like, you know, the, the glass wall or the walking against the wind, that kind of stuff? Well, we've been walking against the wind for a long time in Australia, haven't we, you know? But nothing emphasises the Palmer United Party's unique approach to policy than the issue of gay marriage, which Clive will put to a... Uh, conscious vote... How conscious would people have to be? Will you be having any unconscious votes during this election? I'm the leader of the party, mm. and I don't say what I think about any of these social issues because I don't want to restrict people from exercising their conscious yeah. vote. Clive is so concerned about influencing his candidates that he prefers to not even know who they are. What about the candidate for the for this federal seat of Lyon? Who is the candidate? Well, he, he, he lives in Lyon, and he's been there for a long time. What's his name again, I'm sorry? Look, I'm not going to be quizzed by you on rubbish. Bye-bye. Mr Palmer. <laughs> Today we've announced the first candidate in Victoria standing for the Palmer United Party. That's uh, Chris Kennedy... Chris, uh, sorry, Jason Kennedy. But Clive is running to bring Australians together on the things we all agree about. And he has one final pitch to ensure he gets elected Prime Minister. Well, I don't know whether I could do that. It'd be Prime Minister, my wife would probably shoot me. Let's just hope he's right. <laughs> Welcome to Inside the Wheel.
Today, we're going to talk about the debates. Now, last week, uh, we obviously saw the two leaders speaking at the People's Forum. Yeah, as well as Mark Dreyfus speaking at the Lack of People Forum. Are there any questions? Thanks very much. We thought we'd take a look at how the debates work during campaign season. Now, the most important people in any debate are, of course, the political hacks. <laughs> Their job is to tell the speakers what they have to do to win the debate. And that is... everything! What Kevin Rudd has to do consistently is to talk about the He's future. You've got to be aggressive. You don't want to be too shrill. You don't want to be too negative. And another thing they've got to avoid is uh, being condescending. He needs to start chucking a few uh, hand grenades. You're gonna be hard, you're gonna be Constructive Kevin. His main weapon, I suppose, is Costings. Rudd tonight also has to be very careful not to talk too much about Costings. <laughs> what does Rudd need to do tonight? Well, he's got to win the debate. He's, he's got to win the debate! It's so easy! <clears throat> not everyone offered sensible advice, though. Look, I think Kevin's just got to be himself. <laughs> what, just be Kevin Rudd? That's the last thing he should do. That's insane. <laughs> Look, everyone's intrigued by how these debates work. Luckily, Sky News' viewers won a golden ticket to Willy Wonka's tour of the Magic Factory. There's quite an amount of room here. Kevin Rudd will be on this side of my left, Tony Abbott and next to him. This is the lectern where the 100 undecided voters will be able to ask their questions. God, it's become a tourism hotspot, hasn't it? I mean, forget Uluru. The Rooty Hill lectern is our most famous landmark. <laughs> Understandably, though, news presenters get very excited about these debates, especially Sky host Kieran Gilbert, who described it as a... Uh, what's the word he used again? Fascinating viewing, fascinating night, fascinating time, fascinating night, a fascinating prospect, a fascinating time. I thought it was fascinating. Oh, so fascinating. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah. And, and to celebrate the debate, Kieran Gilbert released his very own thesaurus, which is ironically not very fascinating. <laughs> Although I think the reason Gilbert was so fascinated was because there was a Mark Dreyfus press conference going on there in the background. Oh, he really pulls a crowd, that <laughs> Dreyfus, he really does. You know, but some of these debates were interesting. You mean fascinating, Andrew. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, I'm sorry, fascinating, because the, the questions came from the general public mm. and the leaders took extreme measures to prepare for this. The Prime Minister says he's prepared for tonight's all-important leaders' debate by talking to real people. Real people? He talked to real people. Well, that puts him a step ahead of Mark Dreyfus, at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, these debates, they were, they were challenging for the media because it's very hard for the media to cram in the wealth of policy detail. So we had Shut Up Gate last night, Make Up Gate today. Being dubbed Note Gate. Mm, but they managed. Yeah, well, look, Shut Up Gate was an interesting example, actually, because mm. any old hack can mention the moment when Tony Abbott said this. Is this guy ever shut up? But it takes a super hack to use it as proof that Abbott is a crazed killer. It's a bit like uh, a moment in The Shining when uh, Jack Nicholson's sitting there in front of the typewriter. Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I am surprised nobody's noticed this before because if you pay careful attention during The Shining, it is very obvious. <laughs> How that slipped by? I don't know. Honestly, though, I don't know why they hire these these half-baked hacks. Well, not every program has access to the country's most qualified political analyst, Andrew. Mm. The guy's been stitched up on the exclusive contract with Channel Seven. The big election debate was up in your hometown of Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing down there? Yeah, well, I was going to stay in Brisbane with Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott up there. Yeah, well, I, I do think Agro has more credibility than their other hairy, obnoxious, loud mouth from the '80s. I mean, Agro's doing a lot better than that man. Well, well, look, experts are one thing, but what every debates broadcast really needs is a world first, like Channel 9, who invented the never-before-conceived idea of a hashtag. Nine News and Twitter have teamed up to have your voice heard. Use the official hashtag, you decide nine on Twitter. Wow! Oh, my God. If only everyone could have a hashtag, like, like Channel 9. Oh, oh, wait, they can. Andrew Hanson and Twitter have teamed up to bag out Channel 9 using the official hashtag, LaneProvo9. The most gimmickalicious of all, Channel 7, with their polling app, ViewerVote. This app is brilliant. 
It allows Channel 7 to ask their viewers what they think about something while it is happening on TV. Yeah, yeah. like for instance, here on Today Tonight. Now, you see, 77% of Today Tonight viewers agreed with either silence or arson. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> Both options ring sadly true to me. Uh, now, now, that technology is clearly ready for the big time. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, yeah. And so Channel 7 used it during the debates to judge the winner. Who do you think won the debate? Now, you can see the votes coming in here. And if you just look at Kevin Rudd's total on the left, it's in, it's in the 40s, goes up to the 50s, the high 50s, and then after two minutes... Okay, so let's close that now. What about... Oi! Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty steep drop at the end there, Andrew. Runs 32% all of a sudden. How did that happen? It's all a bit weird, that thing. Yeah, well, uh... Definitively dodgy, no. I think, Andrew. It's not dodgy, Chase. No, no, no. That, that, that was just a, a one-off freak occurrence that happened again in the third <laughs> debate. Now, down you go, Rudd. Ah, oh, that's better. <laughs> Things got so bad that by the end of the night, the seven logos suddenly dropped to three. <laughs> You know, I, I think there could be an explanation for, for all these funny numbers. I think one former leader might account for that sudden drop in Rudd's popularity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, we, we shouldn't suggest there's anything slapdash about Channel 7's polling. Their statistics department is second to none. Just look at these stunning results coming up. They asked, who is your preferred PM out of Rudd or Abbott? And an overwhelming majority said yes! <laughs> It's interesting, actually, because, uh, you know, when... <laughs> Congratulations, Prime Minister, yes! <laughs> when, when, when we use that very same technology to conduct our own poll, asking, are Channel 7 polls useless, the majority of viewers said broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, uh, any questions? Where's everybody gone? Oh, Mark Dreyfus, you've driven them all away! <laughs> this election will be about trust. This is an election about the economy. It is about the carbon tax. It's about border protection. It's about the Coalition's positive plans. It's about cost of living. It's about you, the people of Australia. First, it was Women for Gillard, the supporter group formed to boost Julia Gillard's flagging leadership. Now, with Kevin Rudd at the helm, another group is gaining prominence. As a psychopath, it was so inspiring when Australia got its first elected psychopath prime minister. Yeah, I felt really proud to be a psychopath. Or at least I would have if I had any feelings. The group says Rudd has proven that psychopaths can achieve anything they want and that they no longer have to settle for being CEOs, television executives or South African Paralympians. The group has been active throughout the campaign, although some psychopath volunteers have proven less stable than others. And door-knocking efforts have sometimes been counterproductive to the cause. Just days out from the election, Rudd's also rallying the psychopath base to carry out a revenge attack on his makeup artist. I want your support to do this. A move that has been condemned by the group Men with Short Fuses for Abbott. A lot of people have written off Kevin Rudd this election, but people wrote Charles Manson off once too. Yeah, you won't find anyone here who could bring themselves to vote for Tony Abbott. I mean, we might be psychopaths, but we're not fucking crazy. Please welcome to Question Time the Deputy Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Albanese right there on my TV. I can't believe that name actually fits in the song properly for once there on my TV. Kev Deputy right there on my TV. Well, that fits too. Shocking me right out of my brain. Shocking me right out of my brain. Have a seat. <laughs> Anthony Albanese, your remaining three days as Deputy Prime Minister starts now. <laughs> OK, true or false? The fact that you're on this show three days out from the election means you don't actually think you can win. True. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> right. 
complete this phrase? We've got Good. to stop the... Tories. <laughs> I'll give you that. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> it's gone down. <laughs> All right, Anthony Albanese, can you complete this phrase? No, no, <laughs> no, no. That's Tony Abbott's job. <laughs> okay, have a look at this clip from Sky News. But here, just some live pricks, uh, live pics. <laughs> 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 Was Sky News right A, both times, <laughs> or B, just the first time? <laughs> the, the perils of live TV. Correct. <laughs> or, I'll give you that. When you hosted Rage recently, you said this. As Deputy Prime Minister, you get to do a lot of things that you don't particularly want to do, but you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Were you referring to A, supporting Kevin Rudd? B, dressing up as a Nazi for a News Limited cover shoot. <laughs> or C, reclining awkwardly on the rage couch. <laughs> Coming on this show. I'll give you that too, no problem. <laughs> All right. At the Labor launch, you spent quite a bit of time describing Tony Abbott. Just <laughs> too small. <laughs> what were you talking about there? Uh, the length of his fuse. have given rise to a new type of killer TV format. Oh, a new type of filler TV format. Panel shows are such a phenomenon, the ABC even installed a glass wall so fans can watch their favourite stars. <laughs> News panels comprise a desk and two to four hacks. The most important of which are the media tarts. These tormented wretches roam from studio to studio, unable to afford new clothes, peddling opinions on topics they spent 15 minutes Googling for free. That's not true. Sky News gave me a cab charge once. <laughs> What are you doing here? I'm going on the drum. And it's not just guests who stagger blindly from show to show. Some hosts have so many shows, they can't remember which one they're on. 13, 13, 32 is my television number on the radio, but it's not here on television. Goodness me, that's called autopilot. An autopilot feature that has since been banned. Engaging autopilot. A Civil Morning with Paul Murray on 2 UE. Derek Peterson is over at State Parliament. Derek, good morning to you. Morning, Paul. Panel shows offer astonishing variety with exciting titles like Australian Agenda, Saturday Agenda, PM Agenda, AM Agenda and Lunchtime Agenda. Hello Sky News, why isn't there a shortly after brunch but still before pre-lunch snack agenda? Local panels also cover a variety of important topics. Sorry, look, I've got to get to late line. From ugly politicians. Whacked on the weight, according to the Courier Mail. Moon-faced PM. This is the before photo, I'm told, so we've got an official graphic look at that. to make up. This and is forensic, this is like CSI. Sexy politicians. Well, Clear has revealed their top list of hunks in Parliament. What is it about Malcolm that elevates him up into the sexy list? But it's not all fluff. Sometimes politicians themselves join the panel to raise the tone. Exactly. Let's have a look at this um, list of the sexiest politicians in Parliament. I think Jason is the Rob Lowe of politics. Well, I can't get enough of Hugh Jackman, Lisa. Yeah. Oh, what a superb man he is. He's gorgeous. Which might explain this moment. Julie Bishop at... Do you think Hugh Jackman's gay? Sometimes. You haven't got anything inside us around here, do you? Thanks. Panels put aside politics to cover urgent breaking news. Certainly heating up in politics, but we'll have a change of pace right now. The world's first religious vending machine is open for business. We'll have a loaf and a fish. <laughs> shows feature awkwardly shoehorned talking points. We have you know. a bigger education department in New South Wales than the North Korean education department. Hey guys, we just passed North Korea standards. Yeah. Awesome! News that didn't go down so well in North Korea. Endlessly repeated talking points aren't for everyone. We've got to talk about our achievements and our plans for the future rather than ourselves. I mean, I, I think I've said that 50 times now. I'm, it's starting to become uh, like the taste of vomit in my mouth. Great slow 
Logan, what an election winner. When you've got a good talking point, nothing must stand in its way. Even someone else's talking point. No, it's honey, oh, 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 so I'm talking, so I'm talking about... Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on, no, 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 where we go? I mean, one of the yes, things about... No, 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 one of the things about politics is consistency. And that's the problem with Kevin Rudd. The overwhelming majority of Australians support the NBA. Now, I know you despise it. It makes such compelling television that all shows are adopting the same technique. I mean, I've heard a lot about small things. Kevin Rudd, tripping through people's garden, sticking around the dining table, not the things where the obviously be before... But when panel guests finally break through, it's well worth the wait. Warren's Warren's Warren, and he and he did a Warren. And panel shows not only offer wisdom, they also offer cutting-edge humour. Appearing incessantly throughout the year, it's Gary Hardgrave. Yeah, she's uh, proving, isn't she, with this, that she's Australia's number one knit wit. It seems to me that what she's doing is forget the booties for the baby. She's uh, knitting. Uh, the biggest beanie to try and pull the wool over all of our eyes. Gary Hardgrave! He won't clock up any frequent flyer points, and many of us are worried he'll clock up frequent liar points instead. Hardy Har Hardgrave's humour is changing lives everywhere. Frequent liar points. She lies. She lies so frequent liar points. That's right. <laughs> oh, good does anyone know where Channel 9's news talk webcast is being filmed? And these entertainment values have really connected with adoring panel show fans. Keep the tweets and emails coming. We love hearing from our fans. Uh, Shannon, Peter, your opinion is one big waste of time. Um, another one, Julian, why do we get you sitting there on that table? All the pours out of your mouth is BS. So please get the tweets and emails coming. Peter Van Onselen may receive negative tweets, but Q&A gets nothing but the most lavish praise. Superb television, marvellous thought from some of the best brains of our age. Australia is lucky to have such shows as Q&A. Anyone else think Q&A leads the way in social television? You may ask, why do news panel shows even exist with highly selective feedback, shallow analysis and unqualified commentators? Can I say, you've just described your own program and you call me a media tart. I mean, you've been on more panel shows than I could in a lifetime. <laughs> Do you guys want to join me on a mediocre hacks agenda? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Yeah. Very good. Uh, that is our show for another week. Um, just before we go, we have just realised that ABC viewers have gone almost uh, 30 minutes without seeing Annabelle Crab on their screen. So, <laughs> for those having withdrawals, here's a quick fix. That's the end of this show. We'll be back uh, next week for our final show on Wednesday with our full wrap-up at the slightly earlier time of 9 o'clock. So, until then, happy voting and we'll catch you next week. Good night. Yeah. <laughs>